world. This is Phyllis Hogan bringing you an event from the Michael Moore Medicinal Plant Garden and I am joined today by some of our fabulous volunteers who have helped keep this garden going for the last three seasons and without them we could not do it and they are all masked and joining me today Adair and Mary and Susan and Diane and Laura, our curator. <laughs> Today, this is gonna be our last talk or my last talk in the garden. We'll start them up again in the spring probably. But what I decided to talk about today was the banana yucca and actually almost all the species of yucca. But this is a banana yucca that is not in bloom right now. You can tell a banana yucca by the threading on the um, leaves and I believe these were probably used in the past for thread. So they kind of look like a little bit of a thread. Pretty exciting to go out in the field and see a banana yucca in bloom. So we'll, first we'll talk about that and then I'll show you the utilitarian parts. And then when in bloom, I have a gorgeous picture here of what it looks like before fruit. All species of yucca are edible. And today what we are going to talk about is the uh, banana yucca, as I said. So these, fruit, these um, flowers can be collected either dry or fresh. You can pick them right off, uh, like right now, if you saw some around your area, you could pick the dry flowers and they would look like this. And there's a little bit of juniper in there with the dried flowers. And these I can add to my soup, my stew. I can chop them up with um, garlic and onions and some squash. And I've got a little bit of the past to remind me of what ancient people ate in the old days. So this is an unripe banana yucca. So what I'm gonna do is put these in a brown bag and they'll ripen up in a couple of weeks and then I will cut them open and cook them in my dehydrator, take out the seeds and save the seeds for Laura or somebody that wants them and eat them. They're really delicious, they're sweet. And they used to make these uh, into, they would uh, uh, dehydrate them and then make them into little patties. And then in the, um, in the winter time, have something sweet for the children uh, to eat. So these are, your banana yuccas and nothing more exciting than to take a little kid out on a field trip and to see some banana yucca in the wild. And we don't take all of them, just a little bit. This one looks like it might be getting ready. But when you see them on the plant, when they're really um, completely ready, they're gonna have kind of a caramel color on the outside. And that's when they're going to be perfectly ripe and ready. Now, the roots of the yucca are what is medicinal and has been used in northern Mexico, New Mexico, Arizona by um, tribal people for rheumatism, arthritis, and mainly shampoo. But this is what, let's put them in a yucca sifter here so you can see what they look like. So these are the roots after the bark has been removed and they've been cut into small pieces. This is one of the, I don't like to quantify my plants, but this is really one of the most important of the um, medicinal species and uh, that is used, not just medicinal, but it has a lot of saponogens in it, the root does, and so it's used as a shampoo. And almost before any ceremony, um, the shampoo is used to wash the participant's hair. And so here is what the shampoo is gonna look like. Here's, I just put the roots in some water and let them sit for a half hour, 45 minutes. And look at the rainbow in those, in those bubbles. So I'm gonna use this to wash my hair with on Thursday when I wash my hair. And it will not suds that much on my hair but it will make it very soft and shiny. And the Wallapai elders that I worked with in the early 1980s would tell me, 
we should have used this yucca root on our hair because when you wash your hair with yucca root, you won't go gray. <laughs> so I should have heeded to that wise knowledge from them because I'm starting to get gray now, but I think uh, I just like using this. And you can use this to wash anything with, really. Oh, also the shampoo works with uh, for dandruff, flaky dandruff on, uh, and um, just to make your hair so clean. You just put it on there and you're not gonna get much of a, of a suds, but you just rub it into your scalp and usually I just leave it on and then rinse it and then put your um, cream rinse. Really, In commerce now, um, the yucca is mostly used in cosmetics. So it's for their, it's sudsing property. But we could also drink this. I won't ask you to do it, Laura, but I'm gonna drink a little bit of it. <laughs> I appreciate that. Not bad. It's actually quite, it, it has a little sweet tinge to it. It's pretty good. If I had rheumatoid arthritis or, or just regular arthritis, it helps as a mild anti-inflammatory. You could drink it for two or three days in a row and then take a break because it does um, wash out your, um, your water soluble, uh, your fat soluble vitamins from your lower intestine. So you have to be kind of careful with not using it constantly. But if it works for you, it's going to work. This works for me. I love this and I drink it, especially in the winter when I kind of just get achy and I'm not feeling great and it's cold and damp. And so I'm like, ah, I think I'll make some yucca tea and try it. And then I leave it in the refrigerator and drink it like that. Would you like to pass it around? All right, madame. So she's going to pass it around. Anybody can smell it. It's fabulous. Um, and again, like I said, most tribes have used this for cleansing of their hair and their clothing articles and that kind of thing. Who I have with me today in my yucca leaf sifter, this is the oldest form of basket weaving and it's called finger twill. This is a Hopi um, yucca sifter used uh, utilitarianly for so many different things in the kitchen and uh, passing it out with food on it at ceremonies, with food in it at ceremonies, um, just anything you can imagine. And then this is a, um, it's, it's a I think it's a Savipsi, uh, Savipsi, uh, I can't remember the English name, but anyway, that would be the ring here. And, uh, yeah, so this is, this is that, but who I brought with me that I don't think you've ever seen before is this amazing broadleaf yucca man. This was carved by one of my uh, really dear friends, Philbert Honani, and shout out to Philbert. How you doing out there, brother? Hope you're doing great. Um, this guy represents all of the sweet edible cactus fruit. And on his face, when he comes to dance in the spring, usually um, at the mixed dances, or sometimes at the bean dance, um, he will have his face covered with the, um, you can see his back where he's got the, he's got his yucca with him. Uh, his face will have the yucca fruit uh, smeared on him. So this is Broadleaf Yucca Man. He knows ancient songs and dances that pull the clouds towards him and help to bring rain to the crops. So Yucca Leaf, broad, Broadleaf Yucca Man, who usually has um, gray hair. He hasn't been shampooing with his yucca roots. <laughs> Sorry, I could not resist. Um, and uh, so that's, him him a few years ago and uh, there's probably about 50 kachina images that represent plants um, so this is some of the yucca baskets this is a very amazing technique that goes back again hundreds of years by the Hopi women this is the second mesa version of a yucca plaque 
and you can see that's a turtle, this is a sunflower. Um, I happen to collect these and I love them, so let me show you another one. <laughs> And um, the yucca is getting harder and harder to find closer to the villages. So these are collectibles. The yucca baskets are collectible. And then I have one from the Tahona Otam tribe. And this is a snake. I love this one. I got this one years and years ago, and I just love it. We've got those. And then. The other thing that people used to use the yucca um, leaf for was for sandals. And, um, so these are yucca sandals. These were contemporary, of course. They're not from any ancient burial or anything. But um, several people know how to make these still today. And uh, usually they have a different design on the bottom. And what I was told is that there are designs on the bottom of the sandals so that when people were walking, they could see what clan or what group was walking in that area. I don't know if that's true or not, but that's just, you know, ethnobotanical information that you collect along the way. And uh, then we have a rope. You want to grab that side? And this is a very nice example of a yucca leaf strong hardy rope so many many utilitarian uses of these uh, ropes sandals baskets sifters all kinds of things that people used and this is what the stripped and dried yucca looks like and women would then hang them and dry them, and then wet them when they're ready to make their baskets, their plaques, or whatever they were going to make with the yucca. So we've got those. And then what I like to do is I made a tincture, and I use the tincture, the liquid extract, and I use that um, topically because it's really strong, and we use 190 proof alcohol with it. Um, but Sometimes when you don't have enough time to make the full-on tea, you've got your tincture. So I was going to ask Laura if she'd like to join me. I brought a clean cup for you and a clean cup for me, and I'll show you how we do it. So here's my little glass cups that I got for my birthday present from Anthony, who works me, with me at Winter Sun. And I'm just doing like 20 drops and that that's made from the root here's my handy dandy thermos this is going to be pretty hot for you madame thank you you're welcome and for me now this you would not use as your shampoo <laughs> so cheers to your health my dear i hope you have some aches and pains that this will take away <laughs> Pretty sweet, a little bit bitter, mm -hmm. backbite. But it's really, it's pleasant for lack of a... Laura says it's pleasant. <laughs> I think it is too. It's not like some. <laughs> not like other herbs that I've had her take. Yeah. And she's like, are you kidding me? <laughs> really? All right, well. still try. <laughs> she does try. She's a good sport. <laughs> Wait till I get you girls. <laughs> <laughs> okay, you're next. You're next, yeah. So let's have another drink down the hatch and I would do this about three times a day and I'll probably do it again I did it this morning I'll do some again this afternoon because I do have a trick knee I feel 20 years younger already. yeah all right and look at your hair has gone black <laughs> I'm kidding I'm kidding ah, ha, ha, ha. yes you can totally eat too much fruit it's so delicious and it's so sweet that when they're ripe and you cut them in half you pull out the seeds and you can just eat them before you dehydrate them and um, they do this does have a mild laxative effect and so do the fruit although it's very sweet it does have that mild laxative effect so one day and this is how i know because i got very excited and i had my whole lab filled there was a huge harvest that year 
And we had gone from garden to garden to garden, wild gardens, and we found so many yucca, banana yuccas. I couldn't stop. I just kept eating them and eating them, and then all of a sudden I had really bad laxative effect from it. So from now on, I only do a little bit at a time and save the rest for later. So it doesn't matter how old you are, you still have some learning to do with wild plants. And if you see one and you see it in fruit, think about the past, think about the ancient people and how they harvested and how they enjoyed the sweetness of the fruits and the cleanliness of the roots for their shampoo and how important this plant has been over the millennia. And uh, it kind of takes you back to a primordial time when you think about how magical it is to be with the plants and how we can use them in so many ways. And I also just want to wrap this up by thanking you all so much for helping us with the garden and making it such a great success. And uh, we'll just keep it going and we'll be back next year and we might have guests come in besides me, probably getting sick of seeing me all the time, but we'll have guests. And uh, the Arizona Ethnobotanical Research Association does have a Facebook page. And uh, we are so honored to be here with the museum um, and our collections, which we have over a thousand, over 3,000 um, specimens, pressed plant specimens, will hopefully eventually be housed here at the museum and uh, with our living plant tradition garden here. So support your museum. Laura and the uh, volunteers are going to be having a plant sale again to get money for our fence because we do have a lot of critters that like to come in here and eat our plants. <laughs> So that'll be coming up when, Laura? Start next Tuesday and Thursday. Between 7 and 10. Between 7 and 10. During our hours here. During the work hours here. So you'll be able to meet the volunteers, meet Laura, see what we have here. Uh, yeah. Great.